are Crafting with Kim Byers and today we are all about Valentine's. So we are going to use our Cricut and we are just going to create a number of Valentine ideas. So we're going to do home decor things, we're going to do some little gifting ideas, um, just a lot of cute little things um, that I wanted to whip up for Valentine's. So coming off of Christmas and Halloween and all that kind of thing, I had a ton of home decor um, that I needed to like, you know, put away and weed through and like give away some things. And so now I want to do a couple things for Valentine's, but I'm talking like a couple of little things. So a few things in my kitchen, maybe a couple of little things on the mantle, that kind of thing. But more about Valentine's, I like to give gifts, especially to the girls in my life. So I want to give my mom something cute. I want to give my, my best friend something cute, my nieces, just little things to let them know that they are loved. And um, so it's just a fun way for me to, you know, kind of move into the next holiday I'm all about the holidays. <laughs> okay, so one quick thing. If you are brand new to vinyl, brand new to iron on, I'm gonna put a video up above and down in the description below with the links to everything that we're making here today so that you can go and check out that video before you watch this one. Because what we're gonna do today is we're gonna spend more time on the craft table, we're gonna spend more time making things than we are in Cricut Design Space. So I just want you to be prepared for what we're doing. Today is all about fun and putting, you know, putting everything together. Um, and so I want you to have all the information that you need because it's important to me that you craft with confidence, that you have all the details that you need. Speaking of that, if you have any questions about what we're doing here today, if anything went too fast or you're not quite sure about something, um, leave me a comment, leave it down in the description, just below the description, and then I will do my best to get back with you and help you get through that. I want you to craft and enjoy yourself. Okay guys, so let's get everything going and let's get crafty. Okay, so here we are on the craft table and this is our first project. So we're gonna start out with these sweet uh, little mason jars and we are going to put a monogram on them, a Valentine monogram. And I got these um, from Amazon and they are just too sweet. So they come in um, a multitude of colors. I really liked this pink. Um, I think you can actually get a set of like pinks and blues and greens, very springy. And then you can also get solid colors or um, you know like all red uh, polka dots and then they had some I did see that were like really cute little fruits and things that would be perfect for summer uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take vinyl actually three colors of vinyl and we are going to apply a monogram to the front of this for my niece so the first in my Valentine giving okay so let's go ahead um, I use the Cricut Joy to cut these out uh, the Joy is just such an easy machine for you know small projects like this um, so we're going to go ahead and and weed all three of the colors and then we will use transfer tape to apply it to our mason jar. So I am just going to use my mat to kind of hold down um, my vinyl and you can use um, your tool and kind of hold down so for instance if they want to sort of pull away just use the blunt tip and hold them down hold down that design Okay, so there's first of our three colors. Okay, and then this is her name. Okay, so there's the second. Just one more to go. So the next thing we want to do is we want to cut out a piece of transfer tape that will work. Um, so this is roughly a three by three. So we're gonna cut out a piece of transfer tape that'll work for the entire design. Just make sure we got this right. Oh yes. Okay. There's nothing worse than cutting out a piece of transfer tape that is slightly smaller <laughs> than what you need. Been there, done that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now all we have to do is get our mason jar and it rolls, it'll kind of roll on the table. And so I am just going to use a uh, cloth to kind of keep it from shifting. And so then we're going to take our transfer tape and we're gonna peel it up from the edge and apply it to our first design. So I am gonna start with the outer edge and then we'll work our way in. 
Okay, so we'll take our transfer tape at the edge and then we will apply that to our design and try to use the grids as much as you can. Okay, and then we take our tool, we get our transfer tape off. Okay, and you can even take a brayer and I would just use my mat so it doesn't stick to your surface, um, but use a brayer and, um, or your scraping tool and just make sure that it gets down firmly. And so then when you go to pull it up, it should pull right away. There we go, great. Okay, so now we'll move our jar over and we can take a tape measure. Um, I had measured my mug before I, you know, cut everything out. So roughly I have a three by three area to work with. So my jar is perfectly center, you know, like on the thing. So it's face up, nice front, uh, flat face. And so then I just want to make sure I think that looks good. Okay, so now this is curved and I'm just gonna kind of run over it with my fingers working from the center out because I don't want to have any bubbles on my design. And I wonder, I've never tried to use a brayer on, but yeah, we could try that. Okay, so now the moment of truth. Let's see. Now the thing I like about using vinyl, cause you can definitely etch glass, you know, with your maker. Um, and you can, there are mason jars that you can purchase that you can do sublimation on. But vinyl is great because um, I hand wash these. I don't put them in the dishwasher. Although I've had really good luck with permanent vinyl in the dishwasher. Um, but I like to change them out by season. So instead of having just a million mason jars or a million you know, coffee mugs and that kind of thing, I like to put designs on them and then swap them out for the next season. So that's just me. Um, save a few dollars and um, you know, still have something beautiful, perfect for the season. Okay, so now we will move over to our next color. Okay, so same as before, we put our transfer tape on um, and I use the brayer. You could use the scraping tool and it came off so easily. Okay, and so now we just want to, um, with our design, the, these set of hearts just go slightly inside of the other. You need to look at it from top down. Kind of have to shift in. It's the only thing with having two different colors like this. You kind of have to line it up just so work from the inside out to make sure each heart gets placed and really once you get one perfectly placed the others should fall into space okay and then just work it in with your fingers or maybe even use that brayer like we did before peel off our transfer tape. And guys, big tip, transfer tape, work from one corner, work from an edge. Oh my goodness, she's gonna love this. It is so cute, it's working out so cute. Okay, last but not least, let's grab her name or her monogram. Okay, and then we're just gonna use the brayer. Make sure it's good and secure, there's no bubbles. Pull at an angle, it pulls it right up. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to place I know she is going to love this. Okay, then we're just gonna use that brayer. 
scraping tool, use your fingers, whatever works for you. Get the design down. Then we're gonna pull from the edge. Oh my goodness, it turned out even cuter than I thought it was going to, guys. Look how precious that is. Okay, so let's move everything out of the way and get ready for our next project. Okay, so next up we are going to do some gift bags. So I wanted to put together some cute little gift bags um, that were baking themed for Valentine. I always love to get together and you know like make Valentine cookies and stuff like that, especially with my mom or with some of my friends. It's just a, a fun thing to do. Um, and a lot of times I have extra um, sugar cookie dough from Christmas and so it works out great you know to get that taken care of before it expires so we are going to put together some sweet little gift bags now I got these in a pack of five I think um, from Target and so it had some boy colors in it too so pink red blue um, green and then the other you know the softer pink um, but you can you know find these in the dollar section of the craft store and that kind of thing too okay so let's just take one and I go I went ahead and cut out um, each of my vinyls. so I have three different color or two different colors of vinyl for this one um, and so this one it says spread the love and then it has this cute little whisk on it and then we are going to decorate a couple of things that we're gonna put inside of the bag okay so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna use the brayer and just make sure that this is well down and then go ahead and pull out these centers so with these tiny little pieces, I find that it's better. I like to weed on the mat, although I don't love the sticky part getting on my hand. So maybe flip that around. Okay. Oh, and you can always take the blunt side of your tool and hold down your vinyl just to make sure that what you want to stay doesn't pull up. And the, you know, the key with weeding, guys, is just take your time. Don't be in too big of a rush because if you pull up something that you didn't want to, then you have to end up recutting it and that's gonna take a whole lot more time, right? I may even actually take a pair of scissors and trim that away so it's not wanting to like pull up. Okay, and so I'll just keep weeding out this one and then this is love and then we will move on to the other two and weed those out and then we will apply it to the gift bags all at one time. And there's that little center. Okay, so this said spread the and I'm just gonna take out those little center pieces of all the letters. And guys, let me know, do you, do you like to see the weeding process of a project or you just want to zoom right on over to the next piece. Would love to know what you think. Um, we should do some projects where we're just using all of our remnants, just using all of our scraps. It's worth keeping them, I promise. Okay, so last but not least, let's get our um, whisk weed it out let's take off that excess and then we'll just get out those center parts there we go Okay, so now with our spread the love, um, with the spread the, we're gonna start there because that's the top of our design. And so I'm just gonna take my transfer tape and peel it away. And just like before, we cut it to make sure that it was the right size. Now I will reuse transfer tape. Some people are like, oh, I don't reuse transfer tape. I do, I do it a lot. Um, especially when I'm working on the same project just to save transfer tape and I've even been known to like save it and use it again well, it's perfectly fine if it doesn't get all linty or you know get other things on it you can absolutely save it 
Okay, I'm just gonna use the brayer, or you could use um, your scraping tool to do this, but just to make sure that you get a really secure um, press, especially in and out of all of these letters. It will just make um, picking up that design so much easier. I used to um, you know, try to do it by hand, and then I tried to do it with, the scraping tool works okay, but the brayer is, is really, see, perfection. The brayer comes off absolutely the best. Okay, and so then we're gonna take our bag and just for placement's sake, I'm just gonna say, okay, love, and I gotta be able to get my whisk on there. The design is kind of big and I wanted it that way, but let's see. And so we need to get spread the, okay. So that's about perfect. We're gonna go about right in here. Isn't that gonna be cute? Oh my goodness, I'm loving the color against this bright pink. Okay, and so then we're going to use that brayer again. And the great thing about vinyl, guys, is you can put vinyl on so many things. I put it on walls, paper. Um, oh, and by the way, come at it from a corner. I put vinyl on mugs put vinyl on wood, put vinyl on so many things. Oops. Wow, so cute, I'm so excited. She is going to love this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that same thing with the love and with the whisk. So just quickly apply, and you know, use your grids if you can, guys, use the grids. It really does help you line things up and just make sure that everything is exactly the way you want it to be. Okay, pull it back a little bit. Use your brayer scraping tool, get right in between all of those letters. I just pulled right off. Look how great that did. That just pulled right off. Okay, and so then we will add this. And since I left the hearts in place instead of like hand placing them, I can literally see exactly where my design should go. Isn't that great? And I'm using my grids to make sure I have a straight line. Okay. I like this, I love a great pun. So like spread the love. And then it's just gonna have um, little baking supplies inside. This is gonna be so fun. Like, you know, spread the icing, make cupcakes, whatever, make cookies. Okay, and so then pulling at an angle, we will pull that transfer tape right off. And you notice it's not damaging our bag at all. Look how great that looks. Okay, and then last but not least, we are going to do the whisk. So we will put that down. And it did grab it a little bit crooked. That's one thing with transfer tape, you have to be aware, like it's going to want to grab, um, you know, and kind of pull it up to it. Um, so whenever you're placing your, um, you know, transfer tape onto the design. If it's sticking on a mat or something else like this, it does hold it in place a little bit better so it doesn't like suck up to the transfer tape. So just a little tip. Okay, we wanna get in between all of those. And then we can, there we go. Pick it right up. And so then we will add our little whisk to the bottom. Oh my goodness, I wish I had put this on a t-shirt or something. I mean, isn't that sweet? I may have to use this design for something else because it is just that cute. Okay, and there we go. Did that turn out great? Okay, so let's go ahead and create the things that are gonna go in the bag. 
so next up we're going to make this cute little charcuterie board this is something that i want to put into the bag along with some other things but i wanted to fun it up a bit and make it a little more valentiney i could just see this being something that you put on a play setting you know with a sweet little cookie or chocolates or something that would just be so much fun or even serving it up with coffee wouldn't that be cute okay so what we're going to do is we are going to take some vinyl and i cut out um, a conversation heart and some other little hearts and then we are going to place that on the edge of the board so we want to go ahead um, i went ahead and put it on my mat again i used the brayer to just you know put it back down on the mat so we'd have a sticky surface and then uh, i'm going to go ahead and weed this out so for this conversation heart this one actually came from um, a cricut design space and then um, i just got rid of there were multiples in one cut and then i just uh, use the contour tool. I'll put that video up above, but I use the contour tool to just take out the ones that I did not want to cut. Okay. Tiny little elements there. Okay, and then for the hearts, I actually, I think I'm gonna pull those up like stickers and hand place those because this is more hearts than I want to use. So I'm going to take my transfer tape, same piece that we used before, and I am just gonna pick up my heart. There we go. Okay, so for my little board, I am thinking that, you know, the cookies, little chocolates and things will probably sit there. So I am going to place my heart in this lower corner, about the same distance from each edge. Use my little handy brayer here. There we go. Ta-da! How sweet is that? She's gonna love that. She's gonna love that. So cute. And you could even add some of the other stickers if you wanted to, or some of the other pieces of vinyl. So like, these are really tiny. Like we could just grab one by hand, you know, and add to that. So bringing in some of that other color. And then it'll match our bag. So see, we have our sweet little bag. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing we're gonna put in the bag. Okay, last but not least, I'm gonna put vinyl on these cute little miniature um, baking set. So I got this at Target in the dollar section, and so it was it was $3, so a dollar per you know item. But who can resist these tiny little spatulas and spoons and um, little whisk? Isn't that sweet? I think it's gonna go perfect in this little gift bag. Um, and if I give it to my mom, she might even bake me something with it, right? <laughs> and then I thought about putting some little um, candies in there as well. I just think this would be a really fun little gift. Now for the vinyl, what I'm thinking about doing is um, putting it on the um, top you know, we're on the handles of each. Um, and the thing is, is if this vinyl falls off, guys, it's not a big deal. It's really more about the presentation of the gift um, than it is, you know, it's making it through the washing process. Now these, I think, will stick just fine. These will stay fine as long as they're hand washed. Um, but the vinyl, you know, because you'll be using the handle will probably come off. But you could take these little, I cut these out. Um, it's the same one that we put here, but you just pop them off like stickers right and then you can place them onto each one isn't that i mean that's just so darling and it's so easy it's so easy but it makes it all valentine and it makes it so so sweet and so we're just going to pop off some of those and put those on and then we are going to dress up our little bag and get our gift ready Okay, so let's put our little bag together. So the bag was like 50 cents um, in the pack. And then um, I had the little board and this was, I believe a dollar or a dollar 50. So we're just gonna put that in the back of our bag. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna turn it around so that the love you sticks out the top. How cute is that? And then I'm probably just gonna put, I kind of 
of like the way the whisk looks, especially since I have, you know, a whisk here on the front. So I think I'm gonna stick him in, kind of put him on the side. And then I wanna show off the hearts that we have on these. So I'm gonna put those in. And you can get this stuffing paper. I, I paid, I think, $3 for a large bag of it several months ago, and I've been using it for tons of things. So we're just gonna have that kind of sticking out the top. And I think I'm gonna put some little uh, Lindor chocolates in there. So then we'll put those. And I chose the milk chocolate simply, I love the dark chocolate, but the milk chocolate, just because they kind of match. And then we'll put some a little bit more on top. And I kind of like the messy look. Perfect, isn't that gonna be so sweet? She's gonna love it. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I give it to my mom and then she and I can bake together? Or should I give it to one of my friends and they can bake with their kids? Or maybe I just need to make a bunch more of them and give them to everybody. Because I only paid, let's see, these were $3 each, so that was three, four and a half, five. So literally about $5 and then, you know, the work of putting in um, the vinyl but like five, five, six dollar gift, because these are like even vinyl scraps. I mean, that's a really great, thoughtful gift, right? For a few dollars. Perfect. Okay, so next up is um, this sweet little mug. And this one's actually for me. I'm making this one for me. Um, and I found this at Target. I just kind of happened upon it. I didn't have any plans for it, but I just thought this was so cute and perfect for Valentine. Um, and so I want to say that it cost three or five dollars, I can't remember which one, but isn't it sweet? I just love this. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've cleaned it really well. You wanna make sure that your vinyl is not, you know, adhering to anything except the actual mug. And then for this one, I cut out a conversation heart. And I made the heart myself um, instead of getting a design. Actually, I take that back, I got a design from Cricut Design Space, the same one that I was using before. But what I did is I chose a font that was very close to like the Conversation Heart fonts, and then I spaced it correctly and used the contour tool to contour out the old um, lettering and put in my new lettering. So um, we are gonna make this mug, and if you guys are interested in it, I could do like a quick little short video um, showing you just how to make your own Conversation Heart. So, you know, something that could be really cute you wanted to do for, um, your loved one, your kids, for yourself, kind of like me doing this one. So um, yeah, just let me know if you guys might want me to do that and then I will, I will put that together. That wouldn't take but a couple of minutes. Okay, so what we're gonna do though is we're gonna start out by um, weeding out our vinyl. So like before, we're just going to be taking out the lettering on the inside and you guys can kind of, I didn't tell you what this was, did I? be a surprise. See if you can guess it before I get done. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It says Jesus because candidly guys, no one loves us like he does. No one. So this is kind of my Valentine my Valentine mug. And so then we're just gonna pop that off. Whoops, I still have the S. And then we'll take off that outer edge. There we go. We take our, I might actually put it back on this just really quickly. Take our transfer tape. And then the brayer. Get down in there as well as we can. You know, one thing with mugs that I always, like I'm always like, do I want the design to face me or do I want it to face someone else? And you know, like outer, um, so I, I don't know, what do you guys, do you like the design to face you or do you like it to face away from you? I guess it really depends on what it's saying, right? So when I drink coffee, you know, I'm a righty and so I am drinking from the right. Um, so I could put it on this side or if I wanted everyone else to see it, right, I could flip it over and do it on the other. Or you could just put the design on both sides. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring in my cloth again. We used this with the mason jar before. 
but this kind of helps me to you know for it to set perfectly and I'm thinking with this one you know this is a reminder to myself every day um, so I am going to make it inward facing me and then um, so I have this set up on my cloth and now what I want to do is I just want to get it centered top and bottom and guys you can always use um, your ruler I'm big about measuring so this mug from top to bottom is just over three so three and a quarter and then my design is two and a quarter so I should have a half inch at top and bottom okay so roughly half inch you know what I love about this because it's a knockout I can see the pattern through the lettering isn't that great you guys hop over to Target and get one. As a matter of fact, I will um, try to link this up. I'm linking up all the things that we're using today down in the description below. So I'll try to find this mug and link it up down below as well. I bet, I bet it's on Target.com. And then that way you guys can have the same one. Isn't that sweet? Actually, they had other colors too. So if you wanted to do a set of them, of multicolors, or if you just wanted to do it all for... You know, Valentine, that works as well. I'm not getting it. I didn't get the bottom. Let's see if we can. Now, um, I know what you guys are going to ask. Can I put this in the dishwasher? And the answer is no. Okay, I think I have a little bit of a bubble right there. We have to do that again. Okay, I'm just going to gently put that back. Um, and the answer is no. But guys, it, this is just me. I don't want to have 15 or 30 mugs in my cabinet or in my pantry. Um, and so what I do a lot of times is I'll take mugs like this and I'll put um, vinyl on them that's not permanent, not permanent vinyl. And then after the holiday is over, I will take that vinyl off and change it um, to another design. And then that way I get to change out with the holidays and I don't have to have a million things in my pantry. So that's just, that's just me. But if you want um, to do this and you wanted it to be, um, you know, more of a solid, like forever kind of thing, I would use permanent vinyl. Um, you could definitely do that. And the permanent vinyl is going to stick around and even go through the dishwasher, or at least in my opinion, it has held up super well. Um, I had one mug that lasted for two years with permanent. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I had a little bubble there for a moment, but that's that's perfectly fine. And I realized it's because the mug itself has a little bit of a ripple to it. Um, but again, this is not permanent. This is something we're gonna hand wash, something I wanted to last me through Valentine's. Um, and it's beautiful, it's perfect. It is absolutely perfect for me. Okay, you guys ready to move on to the next craft? Okay, so this little cutie I got from Hobby Lobby, and um, those of you guys who craft with me, and even, you know, I even have on my striped um, sweater today, but I love polka dots and I love stripes. And so um, when I saw this, I just had to have it, and I thought how sweet this would be to put in flowers, like in a flower arrangement. Um, and I do love to give my mom flowers, just randomly flowers. And if you guys have a Publix around you, they have the best flowers like you can get a bundle for four dollars and then three bundles for 12 so you can make like a really great flower arrangement um so anyway i think i'm gonna you know get her flowers and then i'm gonna tuck this down inside the flowers um and so i thought it would be really fun to put a sweet message on it and so i am just going to um use this light pink and go ahead and weed that out and um, you could put anything on it right that's the the great thing about doing your own projects like this is you can literally create any kind of message that you want you could even personalize it and actually i did i cut out um, xoxo and then i cut out my name and i'm not sure that i'm going to add the name to it but i thought you know xx XOXO Kim, you know, like it's being signed by Kim. Instead of putting the little card flower in, I could put the little heart. Um, so let's see. 
Let's go ahead and get, and I took it off the mat while I was talking for whatever reason. Okay, so now we're just going to pop that out. That's fine, this is not a very intricate design, so it pops up super easy. There we go. Okay, so we'll just take our transfer tape and pick up our design. And we can use our mat if we want to, just to like use the brayer. You guys see a theme here with me and this brayer, right? Okay, so there we go. And then I could put it this way or maybe even cock it sideways. That might actually be really fun. Kind of cock it to the side. That looks really cute. Something like this would be really fun for like Mother's Day too. Like you could do some really fun something for Mother's Day. And then if they're like my mom, she keeps everything. So like if you make it and you give it to her, then she's gonna hang on to it. Okay, so then at an angle, just pull that transfer tape off. Look how sweet that is. That is so cute. So cute. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay guys, so for our next craft, I picked up this darling little sign. It's so, so cute and it was, it has this, um, you know, little beaded topper on it, which I think makes it, you know, extra special. And I think it was $2.50, it was $2 or $2.50 and it was a blank. So I painted it red for Valentine. Um, and then I thought we would put white vinyl on it. Um, and I wanted it to say, something really sweet um, to probably hang in my kitchen. Candidly, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. Either that or I might give it as a gift, um, but it's going to say you are loved. And so I actually whipped up um, a quick little SVG that says you are loved, and I'm gonna give that to you guys for free. So I'm gonna put that down below. Um, but I wanted to um, you know, put the white vinyl on it, and then I think I might just use an X-Acto knife, because if you can see, in this, it has like, you know, the cuts or the ridges, and a lot of times I'll see blanks and I'll be like, well, I wanna put something on that, but you know, it's hard to like put something over that and then have that space. So what I think I'm gonna do is we're going to apply the vinyl, and then I'm just going to take a small X-Acto knife and remove those little sections. Um, we'll see how that goes. This is my first time doing that, so we'll see how that goes. So let's take our weeding tool and go ahead and um, weed out the design, and you can see what this SVG is gonna look like. So I used one of my favorite fonts. I love this font. Just a few more details to get out and then when I pick that up with transfer tape, you're gonna be able to see it really easily if you can't see that on camera very well. Okay, so we'll take our transfer tape and using the lines the best that we can, especially right underneath the UR, it's a great time to use the grids. And then we'll use our brayer And having all these little tiny elements and um, the little tiny lettering, the brayer, this is a great time to use it. Gets in between everything just perfectly. Okay, and then we'll take that off the mat, bending the mat slightly instead of our um, design. Oh, and I just realized there was an element. You see that? There's an element right there that I did not weed out. Sometimes white against white can be really tough. And then I want to say that there's a little, yep, there's a little whip <laughs> right there on the end that I didn't get. Okay, so we need to try to pluck that little piece out before we move it over to our sign. Okay. So now there's our sign. Let's see. I want the UR piece to be, you know, on its own line. 
and level. What do you think? That looks really good, right? Oh, I'm excited about this. This is cute. Okay, so then I may have to keep this one for myself, for my kitchen. I have just a little, you know, area um, where I put like little decor like this. And I think this is gonna be so sweet. So we'll use that brayer, make sure we get it good and in place. And then we will peel at an angle. It's coming off. Oops, I spoke too soon. I was gonna say it's coming off beautifully. But that's okay, you know, guys, just know that this is crafting. It is not perfect the first time, rarely. And so whenever things don't go, you know, come away just perfect. Don't worry about it, just put it down, do it again. Oh my, yes, I'm keeping that one. That one's for me. I am in love with this, you are loved. That is awesome, it turned out so good. Okay, so now moving on from vinyl, we are gonna do a paper craft, and then we're gonna hop over and do a couple of um, iron-on crafts. So I cut this one out with my maker. Um, all of these projects can be cut out with your Joy, they can be cut out with your maker or your Explorer. So no matter what Cricut you have, you can create all of these. So for paper, I just wanted to show you guys, I mean, it's a little bit different, right? You have to be um, a little careful that everything cut out. I do not recommend cutting teeny, tiny things with paper just because it you know it's difficult to put together definitely turn your mat over bend it a little bit so you don't bend the paper you're just bending the mat and go gently when you pull it away and depending on the mat you may be able to get it off super easy now I had four of these and so one stayed on the mat and these others you know came off with the paper but you see it looks like this one, there we go. If you're really gentle and you sort of pop them, if they are still attached, they should come off fairly easily. So we're just gonna pop those out. And so I had uh, two tiers of color. So I had XO, XO in red and then in pink. And so I got this new tool. I got this Xyron um, fine point or pencil point, um, hot glue gun and I just got it. I just opened it up. I'm excited about giving it a try, but basically you hold it in your hand like, you know, a pen and then you push this to get the glue to come out and it's supposed to come out fine so that we could put together tiny little projects like these. I love hot glue over regular glue, um, but especially whenever I'm going to put, um, you know, like put them on little skewers or little toothpicks so that I can put them in the cupcake. I just find it less messy. Although it is super hot, obviously, so you have to be super careful. Okay, you can use your scraping tool to get this off, but if you're worried about it, you can also um, just bend your mat and see if you can't pop it up. And that one just popped right off, so yay. And it's, I use, um, by the way, I use a light grip map matte the blue when I'm doing paper um, just because I find that even the standard the green can hold on just a little bit too tight and end up messing up my project so I'm just gonna pop those out or you can use your weeding tool to pop out any of those centers and then we will use the glue and I already had um, my pink element which lays on top of it can pick this up real quick so say they just lay like this super sweet and then we'll just adhere the toothpick to the back okay so let's put these together so I have my two layers so I'm just going to take my bottom layer and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of dots it doesn't take a lot for these to stick so I'm going to take my new little tool and I'm going to put some there some there. And again, I've never used this before. 
Oh, it's showing a little bit more of the glue than I'd like, but I'm hoping, oh, I think that will hide once it dries. Maybe just put a little, another little dot. Okay. So now we're gonna flip it over to the back. so easy to make and you can make it say anything you want to like for a birthday would that not be great if you put the child's name and they had little you know cupcake uh, skewers that were or little cupcake picks that was their own personal name that would be awesome all you would have to do is in you know Cricut Design Space like this design actually came from Cricut Design Space and it's just two layers but you could um, take the offset tool you could create their name, weld them together, and then use the offset tool to make a second layer. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh my goodness, so cute. Okay, and so we'll make a couple more of those and put those in the cupcakes. Okay, moving on to our very first iron-on project. So this is just a 100% cotton tea towel. And I got this, and that was my um, heat press um, up to 315 degrees. So just by the way, side note, um, 315 is what you need for everyday iron-on and 100% cotton. And that will be in the heat guide, and I will put a link to that down in the description below, along with all of these materials. But these little tea towels come in a pack of six, I think it is, and I want to say I paid nine dollars for the pack of six what a great gift idea no matter what the holiday is or hostess gift so you're going to someone's house for dinner or something like that this is just a really sweet way to bring something with you or make fun things for your own kitchen um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a design on this and as I weed it you'll be able to see what the design is but we're going to um, press this on this cute little tea towel okay so I'm going to pop this back on my Cricut Joy mat just because it's easier. Oh, and look what I did. Okay, guys, so we are now cutting iron on or working with iron on and not vinyl. So when you do iron on, you always mirror image, right? So that means that the shiny side went down, so that means to weed it, right? The dull side has to be up. Okay, so I just have a couple of things on here. Let's see if I can find the beginning, there it is. Not sure if you guys can see that on camera. Okay. There we go. Oh, one little centerpiece. There we go. Okay. So I and you, and you're probably thinking, let me see if, can you see that well enough? So you're probably thinking that I messed something up, like something's supposed to go in the middle. Well, you would be right, and actually what we need to do now is take a pair of scissors and just cut away, and it sounds like our machine is ready. So cut those in half, so those are going in two separate spots, and then we will do our red. Have you guessed what it is yet? Can you see the design? It's a very simple design, but very, very cute. And I just did it in Cricut Design Space with the heart that was in the system in Cricut Access. And I used the um, alignment tools to make sure that I was making, you know, rows, make, making a pattern basically. So I like to use the, the align tool, I think it's called Align Bottom. And so what you have to do is so like, for instance, you take a heart and you put it, you know, here and then put another heart here and fill in, you know, put a couple hearts in the middle. And it, if you use the align bottom, it'll make them all, you know, align bottom. And then you can align them um, vertically and horizontally and it will sure them up and make them a solid line. So like a pattern. I've done this in a couple of other videos that maybe you guys have seen. Okay. So there we go. So now I have a set of hearts, and that's sweet. And so just so you can guys can kind of get an idea. So it will have the eye and not just one heart, but many hearts. <laughs> like I love, 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 love you, right? This is gonna be sweet. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this out of the way and we'll get our mat and get our um, towel set up. 
Okay, so here we are with our mat and our easy press. We're at 315 degrees, which is what the uh, heat guide, um, and I'll link it down below, but the heat guide says that you should use for 100% cotton and everyday iron-on. So what I would do is just fold it the way that you would hang it. Um, some people fold them differently. I like to fold mine this way. And so then I would either go ahead and lightly press it to get some wrinkles out this fabric is very wrinkly so i mean there's nothing i'm going to do to make that perfect so i'm just going to go ahead and take a ruler and sort of determine where i want my design to be take a fabric um ruler or you take a clear acrylic ruler which i use all the time and just measure on both sides and, and remembering that you know this isn't a perfect fold so it doesn't have to be perfect and plus you know a tea towel is going to be hanging on um you know something in your kitchen so it's not going to be perfect but you do want to make sure that you know it is somewhat centered to what you think that fold is going to be and so this is the good placement and then i am going to um take you and I'm going to tuck it in. Now guys, always remember when you're working with, um, you know, iron on and you want to put, you know, more than one color together, just make sure that you're not overlapping any of your, um, your backing material. And if you are, that you're making sure that you're not overlapping um, any colors because you don't want, for instance, the U to stick to the bottom of the red and then everything looks great. And then you go to pull it off and it pulls off your lettering and that would just make you sad, right? Super, super sad. Okay, so we put that there. I'm going to put this one here and I'm just gonna tuck it slightly underneath it. Or you know what we could do? be smart about it and just go ahead and trim that away and then we don't have anything to worry about right okay and maybe I'm just gonna move that down a little bit maybe over slightly because it would be nice to know that our hearts and our U are kind of lining up right our hearts and our eye are lining up so maybe we'll pull him over just a little bit not perfect, but, but that looks great. And then we can press it all at one time. Make sure the heart is on top. Okay, there we go. So we're at 315 for 30 seconds, and then we're gonna flip it over and do 15 seconds on the back. Okay, so now we can take this and let's just turn it over and we'll do another 15. So now we'll put our easy press back on the cradle. We're just gonna turn this back over and we are going to give that a few minutes to cool and then we will pull away our backing. Okay, so now it's cool to the touch. So we're going to go ahead and start pulling it away. It's looking great. And so guys, if for whatever reason it decides to hang on, um, all you have to do is put your backer back down and just heat it again. We always pull it at an angle and just go slow. Nice. Okay, that looked great. All right, so let's get it off of the eye. Very nice. One more. I'm thinking that one's gonna need a little bit more heat and it could be because it was you know down near the bottom so what I'm going to do is to protect it I am just going to place that back down on top of my hearts we're gonna do that one more time okay so let's try this again the good news is because we pressed it a couple of times we shouldn't have any problem with this design coming off right it should definitely be in there for the long haul going to hold okay wow it stayed on that time there we go okay so our our O actually stayed in place yay 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 okay so now we can just take this back off of our hearts again and just go slow Okay. 
Okay, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. That worked perfectly. A couple more times, you know, crafting is not perfect, guys. I've said this before. You just have to keep working at it until you get it done. And so that just took a couple more presses, but it's beautiful. It turned out really, really nice. Okay, so here we are with our last project, and I am just gonna make a quick canvas um, that says love. And if, if you guys have seen the gnomes, they're really trendy right now. Um, and I can't say that I have thought all of them were cute, but this design is super cute. And I'm gonna put it down below in the description with all the other things. Um, so we're gonna be using foil. I'm gonna use foil iron-on. It gives it that nice, pretty shimmer. There is a little bit more to it as far as making sure that your peel, um, you, you have to make sure that it has cooled 100%. You cannot do a warm peel with this or it'll kind of like bubble. Um, so we're gonna go through that. And then I started to do this as a reverse canvas um, and I'm not, I'm going to just iron this onto the actual canvas. But I wanted to show you, and I'm gonna put a video up above. If you wanna do reverse canvas, it's actually really easy. And so what you're gonna do is take an X-Acto knife and just trim out all the way around, take your canvas off, and so then your frame underneath is, every one that I've ever done this to looks great. The frame itself looks really good. Um, and so then you can paint it any color that you want and then you can iron your design on it and then reattach it with the frame showing using hot glue or staples. If you have a staple gun, using staples. Um, and so that was my, my easy press saying that it's ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and weed out our design and we're going to apply it to the canvas this way. And I'm gonna show you some tips on how to do that since it has, you know, there's space between it and the actual table. Um, so how to make sure that you get a good press um, and then th I think you're gonna love this. And then I am actually gonna give this to someone that I know who loves the little gnome trend. Okay, so let's go. Okay, and so remember with iron on, we just want to flip this over and work from the back. And so I'm just gonna put it back on my joy mat. And then we are going to take out all the elements um, around all the outline elements. And so my design is going to have Four cute little gnomes. I'm gonna pop that just to make it easier to pull off. And foil weeds really, really easy. And this is like, I believe this is called rose gold foil. So I'm just gonna pop that out. There we go. That came off really easy. And then we're just going to take out the interior elements of the hats. And so I have rose gold foil for um, the gnome's hat and the word love. And then I have um, like a silver, I think it's silver, it could be bronze. Actually, no, this is silver for the body of the little gnome. I think that's all of them. Oh, look how nice that looks when you flip it over. Doesn't that look great, that rose gold, isn't that pretty? Okay, so now we just have to weed out their little bodies and then we can get to ironing on. Okay, so foil is a little more tender, I would say, than some of the other iron-ons. And so for foil, you have to use a lesser heat. Um, so for a cotton canvas like this, it's a 290, 290 degrees. So we use less heat and we always, always, always let it cool 100%. Actually, cold to the touch. It says cool to the touch, but if you pull that off before this is cool, it will bubble. It will ruin your design, you will be so sad. 
bad. Trust me, I have done it. I did it way back in the beginning and it was so upsetting. Um, so do not miss that little, like when you get to the end of the instructions, it actually says cool to the touch. So foil. Um, the other thing is, is because this is in two pieces um, and it's going to be, you know, you. I was trying to think about like how to explain this to you. So what I would do is look at your design in Cricut Design Space, whether it's this or whatever it is. So look at the full size of the design. So this, when they are assembled, is 4.2 inches. And so what we're going to do is we're going to measure our canvas and we're going to determine where the top of our hat goes based on 4.2 inches and centering that in the canvas. Um, because if you're not careful and you're like, you center it this way, and you're like, oh, that looks about right. And then you put, the, you know, the top half of your gnome down um, and then then you add his little feet and you could be, you know, off center top and bottom. So my best advice to you is to just look at it in Cricut Design Space, see exactly what, you know, the height is supposed to be and then measure your distance here, putting your hat at the top, you know, of, the, of that distance. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So 4.2 is the size of our design and our canvas is five and three quarters. So minus 4.2, right? So about one and a half inches. So what we want to do is put 0.75 at the top and at the bottom. So I would say the tippy top of their hat should be just about right here. Okay, so let's move our, let's first of all see, we have an 18 inch and our design is just shy of 12. So that's gonna make us have what three, a little over three on each side. So let's go ahead and say, okay, our gnome guy should be about just over the three inch mark. Okay, so that's giving us um, the, the length. And so then what we wanna say is the top of our hat. So those little feet are in the right place should be about 0.75. So let's move him up just a little bit. Okay, so now we have this where we want it to be. What we want to do is I'm actually going to put a piece of heat tape on it because it just doesn't seem to want to, you know, sticky like I want it to be. And I don't want it to shift. So I'm just going to put a little piece of heat tape. And by the way, heat tape is what we use when we are doing uh, sublimation infusible ink and that's not wanting to stick either. I think it's because it's my canvas. Uh, oh well, we may have to remeasure it again in one second. So what I wanted to show you though is whenever you are doing a canvas and you've not done a reverse, so it's not flat to um, the press mat, what we want to do is just take a cloth and this is not the one that we just created, but just take a cloth and make it the size, you know, of whatever right underneath your design. So maybe what I should have done is done that first so that we did not have to move. We're gonna do it this way. You live and learn, right? You craft and you learn. Okay, so there we go. So that'll make that a little bit better, even pressing, just tucking it under that lip so that it gives us a nice flat surface. Okay, so now let's just make sure that our little guys are all lined up. Yeah. Okay, so now holding this in place, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our um, Easy Press, and remember this is at 290, and then we are going to do half, and then we'll move over and do the other half. Okay. Oh yes, that looks nice. Okay, so now we're just going to shift this over and we are gonna do the other side. Okay, so we'll lift straight up and put it back on the cradle. Now, one thing whenever you're doing it um, on the canvas like this, you can't really press the back side of that. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna let it cool completely, cool to the touch, then we're gonna to start to peel it away and if it gives us any resistance whatsoever, we're gonna do it over again. Okay, so it's cool. It's cold actually to the touch. So let's just see how it's done. Okay, and just go really, really slow at an angle. Okay. 
And again, if it gives you any trouble whatsoever, just put it back down and do the process over again. It's not worth ruining your project to go fast. I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, how shimmery this is. It is so pretty. There we go. And you know, I was thinking about it. I have an Easy Press Mini. Oh, look how that, yes, that is so great. Um, and it would fit, you know, right in here. The problem with the Easy Press Mini is the, the temperature is not exact. So it just has, um, I was gonna show it to you really quickly. It just has these buttons and it has like one, two, three, um, but it's not like the Easy Press 2 where I can say exactly 290 degrees. So that's one of the reasons I just didn't wanna, you know, I didn't wanna tempt fate. Um, so here's the next step that we have. So we need to put on their little bodies. The thing is, is I don't wanna overpress um, the beautiful foil that's already there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place it in, you know, where it needs to be, then I'm gonna put a protective um, cover back on top of it, and then I'm only going to press where I have to. Instead of going over the entire design, I'm only going to put the heat over the area that I absolutely need to. So let's make sure we get this all lined up. I think that's about right. And what we can do is we can take our ruler and just make sure, you know, that we're the same distance. All the way across just to make sure that it's level and by the way it sometimes it bugs me whenever you know there's so much length so I just kind of pinned it up if you guys are wondering why that's there okay so now what we're going to do is put this back on one more time tuck it in tuck that in and then I'm going to use our protective sheet and I'm just gonna lay it I'm hoping not to get um, you know, any heat up there, but just in case, whoops, I'm kind of off, just in case it gets on there, I just want to have something to protect it. And so then we're going to go on the outer edge here. Okay, so here we go again. Second time done, just removing gently, carefully. Okay. for the pieces we know have already stuck down well. Okay, there we go. So second time was a charm. We just needed to get a little more heat with the edge of the frame there on his little feet. And it just turned out great. Isn't that sweet? I'm not sure how well you guys can see that shimmer and shine on camera, but it is so pretty in person. I hope you guys will give these a whirl. I'm gonna put these down below. Like I said, I think there's like eight in the set. Um, and you could do all kinds of things with them, not just a sign, but something really darling for a t-shirt, kids t-shirt to you <laughs> sweatshirt I have this sweatshirt that's dying to have something put on it so I hope you guys will give that a whirl cute okay so I hope you enjoyed crafting with me today and I hope I inspired you to make a little something for Valentine either as a gift or some home decor if you have any questions whatsoever make sure you leave those down in the comments below and don't forget that everything that we did today is down in the description all the links are there in case you want to grab anything all right, guys, I love crafting with you. I hope that you hit that subscribe button and join me for all my future videos, and I will see you guys next time.